Hi and welcome back to Classic MGB. Now today we're somewhere special. We're at Castle Coombe for the Autumn Classic. And all the publicity material, the poster, and the programme has got an MGB on it. So I'm sure there'll be lots of great MGBs and other classic cars to look at. So what are we waiting for? Well, I've arrived at the Doran Reese tent, and I have to say there's some really beautiful cars here, including this one. It is a Roadster. It's a V8, so it's not obviously a factory V8, but it has been restored from the ground up with a heritage shell, and I have to say it's probably one of the best bees I've ever seen. So here's another bee in the auction. It's not quite as nice as the one inside. That's why it's outside. It's got bit of nature's varnish on it because it isn't a great day today but still a nice car it's I think a rubber bumper that's obviously had some work done to it it's got a bulge in the bonnet like an MGC it's had it a debumpered it's had the lights fared in so it's a sort of homage to a Sebring really but um, not bad value in the auction four and a half thousand ish well, having seen the two MGs they've got on offer, I thought I'd catch up with Nick Wells, who's the, the man behind Doran Reese. So tell me about Doran Reese, Nick. Oh, well, Doran Reese um, has been trading since the late 19th century, uh, mainly doing antiques and, and collectibles and furniture. Um, it went into new ownership uh, around about 2021, uh, and we've since developed the, uh, the business uh, forward. I, I joined to actually establish a motoring division, so classic cars, classic motorbikes, and classic uh, automobilia as well. Um, and we've been running those sales since uh, mid-21. So. Super, and you've got some lovely cars here. I really do, uh, particularly some nice MGs. You know, it seems yeah. to me you're catering from a lot, for a lot of a big range, if you like. Well, we try to, I mean, we, in terms of values at the auction, we've got about up to, for say, from say 10,000 up to about a quarter of a million. So it's quite a broad range, but we just like to find a nice range of cars that suit a, a range of different interests and different ages. So you know, at the oldest, we've got a, a 1930s Riley, and then we've got a, an early 2000s uh, Ferrari F430, so, and everything in between. So. so where do the cars come from? Is owners that just decide to get out of their classic car, or, or how, where, where do you get owners? various, various uh, uh, collectors thinning out their collections or consolidating collections. We deal with uh, families who, for one reason or another, they have a car that they need to sell, which may be in the garage they need to sell, or a collector that's decided that actually he's had his fun from one type of car and he'd like to kind of go into another type of car. So a, a variety of different sources. Excellent. And you're based locally in Froome, I gather. We are. We're based in Froome. Um, we run auctions uh, in Froome and here. And also uh, we've got one in... Uh, Shepton Mallet at the Bath and West in February for motorbikes as well. So, and another car sale coming up at the end of November in uh, Bradford on Avon. So, oh, okay. that'll be interesting. Yeah, it will be. So, million dollar question if you had to take one home, which one would it be? It's the AC Ace Bristol. And I'm not saying this is the most expensive car here. I think it's absolutely gorgeous, very original car, and you know, just a lovely thing just to have in the garage. So. So if you fancy a race car or a classic car, you could buy one here if you wanted to. And I'm with uh, Andreas Hicks, who's from Classico. He sells competition and classic cars. So this is, a, it's called a Lenham Le Mans Coupe, basically. Um, and Lenham Motor Company, they built specials effectively in the 60s. Uh, this particular car is the last car that Lenham built. Swinging 60s would be sort of really, or HRDC would be sort of the, the series that would you, yeah. you would race this car in. Um, but the beauty of it is it's also road registered. So I drove it here this morning uh, and it was absolutely hilarious. Excellent. And what sort of, you said you've got sort of 15 cars. What sort of other interesting cars have you got at the moment? Well, we've been quite lucky in the last couple of weeks that we sold quite a few cars. So I sold three cars last week. Wow. So it's looking a bit bare. But you know, we my rule is if I like it and it's saleable and it's interesting, I'll sell it. 
Now, as you'd expect, the MG Car Club have got a good presence here. This is the Southwest Centre's tent, or marquee, I should say. Lots of lovely MGs here, including these two MGBs. Now, this one is a genuine race-prepared MGB Roadster with obviously a hard top. Um, it wasn't prepared by the works, but it was definitely raced of that period. And this one behind me is an MGC Sebring replica, very similar to the Romeo car, if you saw our video on that. But it's great that people can get a chance to have a look at lots of MGBs and some quite historic ones here as well. Now, even though this is the classic MGB channel, I couldn't resist taking a look at this. It's an MG SV X Power. Very, very rare car. There's just 27 registered in the UK. It is actually a supercar designed by Peter Stevens. Fabulous bit of kit and really quite exclusive. And it's great to have one here at Castle Coombe. One of the great things about the MG Mark is that it's been going for so long, 100 years in 2024. And that means you get to see some lovely newer stuff like, you know, the SV that we talked about, MGFs, that kind of thing, and also MGBs. But you also get to see some of these beautiful older cars, 1931 C-Type and another 1931 car behind me. And it really shows the heritage of the Mark. And of course, part of MG's heritage is in racing. So we got this MG Magnet, K3 Magnet in racing spec. And I have to say, I'm not sure the health and safety boys would be too happy about that. And it's interesting that right next to it is a more modern MG Maestro Turbo. Both quite rare cars now. What about this for a number plate? For those of you outside the UK that you can get any old number plate, it might be easy, but this is really quite rare. MGB 198D, but looks very like 1980, and it is a 1980 car. How about that? Now, as the Castle Coombe Autumn Classic is a race meeting, I thought it was about time I headed to the paddock to find some drivers. Well, I've managed to find somebody that races an MGB. It's Dan Pickett. Dan, tell me about what class you're in and a bit about your car. Yeah, so this is a MGB. Uh, it's 1962, this one, very early one. Um, chassis, I think, 2000, so very, very early one. Um, and it's a pretty well standard car. It's got an 1840 engine. It's got a straight cut gearbox and a limited slip diff. They're the only modifications really it has. It runs um, standard brakes on the front, disc brakes on the back. It's pretty standard suspension, it's got some tweaks, um, but yeah, it runs to an FIA specification that ran in Le Mans in 1963, oh, 64, really? sorry. 64, right. um, so they're all built to the same specification. Um, so all the MGs you see running here uh, today in the GT Sports Car Cup all have FIA papered actually the same specification. Absolutely. So that makes the racing very uh, interesting and competitive. So we all know we've got the same same playing field, so that makes a difference. And what sort of lap times do you do around Castle Coombe? Uh, this can do, um, last year we could do, in a dry, can do about 125. Uh, yeah, it's quick for a pretty standard car. Um, it's, uh, it's a couple of seconds slower than a Healy 3000, but obviously totally different car we can't keep up on the straights um, no. but we can get through the corners a little bit quicker well i've done track days here in my bgt and i do a 158 so, right, okay. so <laughs> very slow so uh, it's surprisingly quick actually i suppose this is all stripped out so there's yeah, a lot less weight in it it's pretty trick i mean although it's the 1840 it's got uh, special crank rods ah, right, pistons okay. uh, it's got a weber carburetor on it um, it produces about 160 brake horsepower, so it's it's a lot more than I think in standard they were maybe 85, 90. Yes. And the car is um, a little bit lighter; it weighs about 850 kilos. Um, it has um, an aluminium bonnet, which you had as standard anyway as production. Yes. And this one has an aluminium skin on the boot, um, and then that's about it really. It's all obviously fully stripped out. Um, although we've kept the original, this is all original interior in here. Um, including it's got the original delivery um, garage badge actually on the on the dash so all the instruments are original we bought it as a road going car um, and we turned it into a race car so we're the only people that have raced it um, so yeah we kept everything the entire body shell was was reused um, yeah there's nothing that's not original in here including Super. the gearbox is original too that's amazing even though you put different yeah, gears in yeah, straight cut the gears things are all, all original excellent and so so why an mgb um, we, um, I've been racing for a long time in different cars, uh, Formula Fords and uh, Morgans, and um, it's just fun to drive. And um, the beauty of these races, I get a lot of enjoyment out of sharing the car. Um, so it's my, my father owns the car with me. 
Um, so we both drive. Oh, fantastic. And the, the dynamic of having both of us drive, the yeah. discussions and the pit yeah. stops and... Uh, you know, it just makes a nice day, really. I mean, the, the race this afternoon is two hours, wow. and we've got a pit three, uh, two times, two, yeah, and two pit stops. So there's a bit of strategy involved. Excellent. And um, the odd thing is, we don't see each other for the whole two hours. Of course not. But, no, uh, you're in and out of the car. Yeah, in and out of the car. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Now there's all sorts of people racing here, including two lovely young ladies, Emily and Arabella Welsh. Emily, tell me a bit about the car and why you're doing this. Um, well, it's always been in the family. Our dad runs all of the rest of these, so we've always been into it. And the MGs are such a good like starter car. Most novices, when they go into the racing, go into the MGs because they're sturdy and they're reliable and they're, they're just fun. It's great. It's really great to be out there. Excellent. And uh, how have you been doing in qualifying? Uh, not the fastest out there. Spun a few times, but we stayed on and we made it to the end, so I call it a success. <laughs> so Arabella, what's it like racing with your sister? Um, competitive between the two of us. We're not allowed on track at the same time, but uh, that's why we share a car. <laughs> Good fun mm. though. Good fun. Yeah, we've got another MGB at home, um, but we're not allowed to both be out at track at the same time because it would end in disaster. So we just share them. Quite right. And so what have you got to do? Um, and you, you're obviously very young. What have you had to do in order to be able to race? Uh, do licenses and that kind of thing? Yeah, well, you apply for a race license. So I applied for my race license before I had my road license. So it was a bit difficult. But you just go to any racetrack, really, and they do the race license tests. And you have to do a theory test about all the flags and everything. And then you go out with an instructor, do a few laps around the track, and they just make sure you can drive safely. And then you have to get your six signatures. Once you basically get a provisional, and you have to do six races, right. get six signatures from the clerk of the course to say you've done them safely. And then you upgrade it. So she's got her six signatures. Yes. I've not yet. I have my full license. Hence the big yellow cross the big on the back. Yellow cross. Yes, the learner sticker. <laughs> so million dollar question, who's the better driver? Well, Me. I'll say this race last year, I was quicker. Yeah, but so. I was quicker this year than her fastest lap last year. So <laughs> we'll see in the race. <laughs> So there you go, that's a whistle stop tour, a chat with a few interesting people at the Autumn Classic at Castle Coombe. I think the weather's turning, so I think we'll probably head for home now, but we might come back tomorrow because it is a two-day meeting. Now, if you get a chance to come to the Castle Coombe Autumn Classic next year, you really should. There's lots of lovely cars to see, and there's some great racing as well, although we haven't actually seen much of it yet. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a share, like it, subscribe to the channel would be fantastic as well. Everything helps to get the channel known and get it out to people that really want to see our content. As always, thanks for watching and take care.